So now when we now we can click a button, wait for our data and load our scene, but we're not yet able to display localized versions of the game text, right? We want to populate all of our text at runtime with text from whichever JSON file we've loaded at startup. So we'll do this by attaching a simple component to every text object in our UI, which gets the stored values from the localization manager. So we're going to return to the localization manager for editing, and we're going to add another public function, which is going to be called get localized value, and it is going to take a string called key. And of course, it is a public function that returns a string. So we're going to declare a public function that returns a string called get localized value and takes a string as an argument, right? So it's going to take in the key value, the key, and it's going to return the value. So we want to account for situations in which the text is not found. And so for this, we'll have a missing text string that will be displayed if no value is found in the dictionary that matches the supplied key, right? So we're going to add up at the top a private string called missing text string. And that's going to be equal to localized text not found. And then in get localized value, we're going to start by declaring a string called result, and that's going to be equal to missing text string initially, right? Then we're going to check if localized text, our dictionary, dot, we're going to call contains key, and we're going to pass in the key that was passed in when we called the function. So Contains key is a way to check a dictionary to see if there is an item with that, if there is an item at that key, right? And so if there is, then we're going to say result equals localized text key, right? We're actually going to retrieve the value and store it in result. Then we're going to return the result, right? So if we successfully found something, we'll be returning the actual value stored at that key. Otherwise, we'll just return the missing text string so you can know that something has gone terribly, terribly wrong. Now, we're going to save the localization manager, and we need to create the component that we will attach to text objects that will actually call get localized value. So, let's jump back over to Unity, right click on scripts, create C sharp script, and this is going to be called localized text. And let's open that up. In localized text, we are going to have a public string called key, right? And so this is going to be attached to the text object, and this is going to be the key that this object is going to look up to display in whatever language we currently have loaded. And then, in order to use members of the UI namespace, we're going to add using unityengine.ui, and we're going to add in start a text, which is a UI text variable called text, and that's going to be equal to get component text. So we're going to get a component reference to the attached text object, right? So this needs to be attached to a game object that has a text component on it, right? Part of our UI. And then we are going to set text.text, .text, right? So the actual string that's being displayed to equal localization manager dot instance dot get localized value key right so we're going to call get localized value and we're going to pass in key 
and then it's going to return the actual localized value and that is going to become the text that is displayed. We can delete update because we don't need it and save. So super simple little component. Uh, now, save OK. And now we are going to return to Unity. Now we're going to open our menu screen, right? And in the canvas of the menu screen, we're going to add that component to title text. So we're going to drag localized text onto title text, and we're going to type in game underscore title, right? That's the key. Now it's got to match exactly, right? Because it's looking it up as a string. Uh, so make sure you get that correct. And then we're going to expand the start button, select the text under it, right? We can tell we got the right one because it's got a text component. And then we're going to add a drag on our localized text component. And this is going to be start underscore button. And now save that scene. That's all we need to do there. And if we return to our loading screen, play, we should now be able to load the German. Hooray! And so it's localized the text, but notice that we have a problem here, which is that our text is getting truncated, right? Instead of spiel beginning, we only have spiel, right? And so the issue there, and this is actually the reason I kind of put this in here, is because this is a common problem with localization, right? German tends to have long compound words in it. Um, I've heard, I don't speak Hungarian, but I've heard that Hungarian has like crazy long words in it. And so going from one language to another, the length of your text is gonna change. If it's smaller, it's not really a problem, but if it's bigger and it overflows the button or the box, that is a real problem, right? So what we're gonna do in the menu screen, let's go back to the menu screen, on the canvas, we're gonna select the text and we're gonna turn on best fit for the text component. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow a minimum size and a maximum size. Now I've set the maximum size to be the same as the font size. So this is as big as it will ever go, but it can get smaller as needed to fit. So let's save that, jump back, test again, right? Click Deutsch. Now we can see here that it's a little squished in there, right? So we need to add a little padding for that. So I'm gonna exit play mode, reopen the menu screen scene, expand the canvas, expand the start button, select the text. And what I'm gonna do is just zoom in on it and I'm gonna grab the anchors and I'm just gonna pull them in so that we have 5%, not rotate, 5% and 5% on either side. And then I'm gonna zero out the pixel offsets in the rec transform, right? So now we just have a slightly smaller box uh, to fit our text into, but it just leaves a little padding so it's not gonna go right up to the edge. Uh, and then we will save, double click the loading screen to open it, play, Deutsch, and there we go. So now our text has been, our longer text is fitting in there and it's got a little buffer uh, on the horizontal axis so it doesn't get too squashed in there. Okay, so, you know, there are many other gotchas, you know, like if you're going from Japanese to English, you're gonna have really different lengths and you have, uh, you have to deal with different fonts, right? You might need, you know, you're gonna need some Japanese fonts because it's a different character set. Um, and so there are many issues to consider. We're really focused just on the text data itself. Um, but I just want to show another little example of other types of things that may happen once you start swapping your text in and out dynamically. All right, let's just save our changes to that. And so that is everything we need from a runtime perspective, right? And if you wanted to edit and write your JSON files by hand, we would be fine. Uh, but what I'm gonna show you is how to write a little editor script so we can have an editor in Unity, an editor window uh, to be able to author, save, create, etc. this content. So we're gonna do that next. Um, but first, let me take a look at the chat and answer some questions. 
uh, Mr. Baden asks, how do you prevent localized text from loading the key before localization manager? That is why in the loading screen, we do not allow the first scene, which is what contains the localized text components to load before we've checked if the localization manager is loaded, right? This scene here with the flags that's on screen now, and I'll put the, the code on screen for anybody who's copying, that screen is going to be, it's not localized, right? It's just, we just typed in by hand the names of the languages, uh, and it's not trying to access any data from the localization manager because that's the loading screen, right? We're gonna load up the manager there and then launch our menu, which is where the dynamic localization starts happening. Let me go down to the bottom. Yeah. Um, what are people talking about here? Someone suggests extending the text class and not having an additional script. Yeah, you could. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Number Cruncher says no evil static singletons. Yeah, it's worth mentioning uh, that some people prefer other types of architecture. In this case, I think this is appropriate, but obviously some folks don't like it. And whatever design patterns you prefer, go for it. You know, there is really no one single way to do game development and everybody has a preference. That's always needs to be kind of at the back of your mind when I'm teaching stuff. Um, it's not the one true way, right? It's just one way of many. <laughs> 